Hallelujah. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. <coughs> beautiful, 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 beautiful. Hallelujah. It's uh, just a sweet blessing to be in this part of the kingdom still. We truly um, are learning more and more that our ways are not his ways. <coughs> and that's okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you for this sweet moment, for this sweet Shabbat. Thank you that we can come into your presence, Father God, with a, a heart that sometimes can be worried, sometimes can be excited, sometimes can be troubled, and you receive us all the same exact way. And we thank you for that, Father. We ask that um, you continue to open up the, the windows of heaven over this place, Father God, so that the word, the word, Father, will find good soil. Father, we thank you that you know each and every one of us here, Father, these little vessels that have gathered here, Father. You know them so, so, so well, so, so intimately, Father God, so... There is not a single little part of these earthen vessels, Father God, that you do not know, Father God. There is nothing that has been hidden that is hidden from your eyes, Father God. There's, there's, there is no pebble, there is no little bubble of air, Father God. There is nothing in these earthen vessels, Father God, that is a surprise to you. And we thank you for that, Father God, and we ask that more and more and more and more, Father God, that we will come before you just, just, <laughs> I'm getting spread open. <laughs> so let it be spread open, meaning completely, completely surrendering, Father, being plucked on the center of the spinning wheel, oh God. That you may have your way, Father, that you may form for yourself a vessel that is pleasing to you, O oh God. We are in the world, Father God, where we're, we're trying to shape ourselves. Others try to shape us. But Father, we just place yourselves at your hands, O oh God. Have your way, O oh God. Have your way, have your way, have your way. Have your way. Thank you, Father. Recently, someone spoke to me, and they said, I, I'm very, very aware that we're in, in very important times, very trying times, times where we have to be paying close attention to the leading of the Lord. And I said, but I can't hear can't hear his voice. I try. I want to obey. I want to do the right thing, but I can't hear his voice. And I don't know what to do. And immediately what came to me is, our Father never gives you new information until you take care of the old information he spoke to you. Because the thing he spoke to you that has not yet been done, he cannot jump ahead and speak something new to you because the new word, the new revelation, the new thing he wants to do can only work when this thing gets accomplished. He can't put Joseph into Egypt as a ruler of the land. That's the goal. But there can be no shortcuts to get there. And in, in, in this time that we're going, this is not an exciting time. It's sometimes frightening. Sometimes it's confusing. Sometimes we're trying to figure out, Father, well, it, please help us understand. I am, as a servant of the living God, 
This morning I want to encourage you with an urgency. An urgency. To, 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 to stop for a moment and say, what was the last thing? What was the last thing that the Spirit of the Lord put in my heart to do? And just go back and just take care of it. And watch and see how the river will begin to flow. Because there are things holding back. Holding back. If if you could see a visual. uh, uh, The way beavers work. You know, there's a flowing river. The, 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 the river or the stream flows. It's flowing, it's flowing, it's flowing. But they know that by, by blocking one branch in the wrong direction, then another will pile up against it, and then another, and then another. And what was once a stream turns into this huge dam, and the flow is cut off. And there's a lot of us that have these little things in the way. And they're simple things. They're not even complicated things. They're very simple things. Sometimes it's as simple as the Spirit of the Lord has just whispered and said, You know that drawer you have in your house that has everything in it? And from time to time you've been looking for something and you you hear this voice, Clean this thing up. Fix it up. Organize it. And you think it's your mind, it's your own thought, and, and so you put it aside. And, and, and then you come into the presence of God, and, and you want Him to begin to, to give you revelation and help you understand the things of the kingdom. And God is saying, that drawer is the things of the kingdom. If you don't do the small things, how can you be entrusted with the big things? Amen. <coughs> Every single one of us has heard. Every single one of us. And it's simple. And sometimes what happens is, is, is we, we, we conform to that place where we feel comfortable. We're not really sinning. We're just, just comfortable. We'll get to it. There is no getting to it. We just have to take care of it. You know... There are certain scriptures that I personally really dislike speaking about because they take a little bit more of our, of our focus on the King of Glory, it seems, and puts it a little bit on us as to our part in this thing. And, I, and, I, and I, I hate going to that place because I'm so much in that place where I know that we must decrease and He must increase in us. But this morning, bear with me a little bit because there's a stirring in my spirit. Because there's a little bit of a log jam. A log jam in the the hearts of God's people. I'm reminded of of the parable that Yeshua spoke. And and he said that that a man brought his servants out and, 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 and he gave one five talents. And to the next one he gave two talents. And yet to a third he gave one talent. And then it says, he gave them each according to their ability. And then he left. Mm. And when he returned some time later, he came to settle with his servants based on the talents that he gave them. And it says the one that had the five talents, he quickly, immediately, as soon as the meeting was over, he ran out and he began to, to move and shake and do something with those talents. And by the time the, 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 the master returned, he had another five talents. He had a total of ten. He received five. Now he had ten. And the master says, very good. And the master went over to the one who had given two talents. Less responsibility, less gifts, less something. He says, what did you do? And he says, immediately after you left, I know who you are. And I ran. I'm going to get to work and train and figure out a way to do something. And, and sure enough, here I have, I have four talents now. But he says that the third one looked at the master and he said, I know how ruthless you are. And I could not bear risk losing this talent that you gave me. I knew you would come back and ask 
for it, so what I did is I took the talent and I put it in the, in the earth. I kept it safe for you. And here you are, and here it is. The master looked at him and he said, You know how ruthless I am. You know that I even reap in places I did not sow seed. I, I, in other words, I expect always an increase on my investment. Why would you place my investment on the earth when I gave it to you? It, you, you see, we don't understand. You are the earthen vessel that he gave the talents to. You don't take, you don't take the gift and put it on the earth because the earth is not where the gift went. The earth went to the earthen vessel. It's the vessel that gets the blessing, not the earth. It's the earthen vessel. When God decided to do something in the beginning to show the universe who and how the universe was created, He did not breathe into the earth. He took from the earth and formed Himself a vessel. And once He formed the vessel, then He blew into it. And He expects an increase from the vessel that He blew into. You don't take the gifts of God and keep them aside. Hallelujah. When He arrives, you say, you gave me this and this is that what you gave me. There always has to be an increase. If you can run a marathon faster than any human, and that's your gift, by the time the master comes, you better run faster than you did before. He's not interested in you saying, I won the race. You did not win the race. The guy who came in last ran a little faster this time, and he's the one who gets the blessing. God is calling us at this hour to understand that we are the earthen vessels that he has placed his talent in according, according to the ability that he knew we had. He will never give you something that you're not able to do. He never asks you to stop doing a thing when he knows you can't stop it. He knows, he knows, he knows because with humans this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. I am so blessed even in the natural to come in, in here and, and, and just, just seeing some of the f uh, servants of the Lord, you know, like someone will ask, you know, we, we need someone to volunteer downstairs. And, and there's, my God, there's someone who actually is saying, I'm going and I need a volunteer. And then someone rises up and goes, praise God. Next year there's supposed to be 20 volunteers. Next, the year after, 100 teachers and 1,000 volunteers. God is looking for a multiplication. Nothing that is good needs to remain good. It has to be gooder. <laughs> Everything he does, he doesn't care if this year you lay down your life to do this and that. Next year you have to lay down your life to do this, that, that and the other. Because the kingdom is a kingdom of multiplication. Every good seed multiplying after its own kind. Every good seed after its own kind. After its own kind. You have to begin to understand. It, it, it is a metal, it is a, it's a matter of, of, of understanding God's supernatural or ununderstandable. Reality. 